I'm going to swap us over in five, four, three. Hi, guys, and welcome back to Roll for Damage, where I take this wonderful group of nerds through my homebrew world in a Rise of Tiamat adjacent campaign. I am really sorry for the tech difficulties we had earlier, uh, but we are here. Everything seems to be good. Hope you can hear the music. Hope you can hear us. But before we get into tonight's story, I want to thank a few people. Firstly, to HeroForge, who are our sponsors for this season. Uh, HeroForge is an online customization tool for creating miniatures. They have a ton of races, weapons, assets, whatever you need to make your own character, whatever you want it to be. Uh, I've had a lot of fun, you know, just endless hours of entertainment designing characters with the ability to change their, you know, body proportions and facial expressions and all sorts of things. I'm sure a lot of the guys here have done the same. Uh, recently, at the end of last year, they even had the ability now to, to print in, in color, so you can get your minis that way if you wish, or they have a professional painting service if you want to shout a few more dollars for some really, really nice looking miniatures, it's well worth it. Uh, the other thing they have, which we will be using maybe not tonight, but throughout the campaign, is tokens, where you can take a sort of screenshot of your character and they put in a nice little token border and import it into your favorite, you know, virtual tabletop. Uh, next up, I want to thank Brie for her amazing art. Right now you can see uh, Leaf on the screen. She's also done all the overlays and logo and pretty much everything design-wise for the channel she has done. So uh, if you see her around, make sure to say thanks and hi. Uh, and our, I want to thank our tech tonight. Uh, agent number one who's also a player so thank you very much for uh being allowing yourself to be sort of like a little distracted with that sort of stuff i really really appreciate it Scrambling and to sirenscape <laughs> who <laughs> a little bit yeah uh sirenscape who are uh, doing the music uh they have a cool online player which we use so that all the players can hear it and hopefully you guys can hear the music as well just below in the background all right i think that's all the intros out of the way so we're going to gonna start and I'm gonna do a little bit of the intro and then I'll pass it to someone else to do a recap. So the party starts its story today as prisoners in a caravan guarded by 50 knights of Etredale and five Sanguinar, all led by Captain Raphael de Song of House de Song. The party has been invited to the capital to answer for their crimes and potentially assist in dealing with a group known as the Bastard Five. They're a group of incredibly dangerous killers who are currently roaming Etrinale. Uh I'm going to nominate Sean. Do you want to give us a rundown of what happened last session? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll give it a I'll give it a try, especially considering last season I I didn't give a single. <laughs> <laughs> recap um all right so uh other than what nova, nova already told us about us getting um <clears throat> imprisoned to go to etchdale um or Etchelon to answer for our numerous crimes um <laughs> we there were a few other things that happened we started off the session after uh saros had just unleashed a a wild, uh, my uh, wild magic surge that absolutely uh, disrupted everything, disrupted um, Yako's ship, and we had to essentially explain to him what happened uh, through maybe some glaring eyes and some irritation. Or I attempted to let him know that it was Saros's fault entirely for mishandling uh, um, his magic that had been inked onto Saros's arm uh, through whatever mysterious relationship Oryx Orb and Saros's meteor ham hammer have. Um, so uh, after we kind of explained that to Yako, um, we had a situation, well, Yako went to go get a friend to help heal Nia. Us in the room, told not to cause any trouble, um, immediately had to deal with uh, um, Sloane's uh, bear friend which uh uh trying to take over and intimidate her and you know and they had this really cool exchange where they were um mocking her and trying to get her to rage and uh luckily auric was able to banish the entity temporarily um with a dispel a good and evil spell um 
later on, um, we learned through um, through Yako's friend uh, that Sloan had actually already met, who was the runesmith from earlier. Um, we had learned uh, that this sword contains what amounts to an ancient deity of, or not necessarily ancient, but a deity of war and rage and uh, well, we, I guess maybe some of us presumed this might've been a deity of sorts. Um, maybe not, we didn't think it was this, this significant of a situation. And, uh, this friend was visibly frightened by Sloane anytime she got upset. Um, so from there, um, we began talking about our situation, what had happened. Um, we also learned from Yako's friend that Nia had had runes carved into her bones um, that caused her to take damage anytime someone tried to heal her. He was truly horrified by this. It was very perverse magic and that there was no way to actually resolve this magic without actually through surgery going in and carving out the runes, um, which just uh, you know if it doesn't make your skin crawl a little bit um and uh we it sounds worse than it was but we dumped nia off with this guy um <laughs> and promised to come back with a surgeon <laughs> true only because we couldn't do anything and she'd be in more danger if she was with us and this was a safer place for her we thought at least um and uh, after that, before we could even get a chance to leave, um, well, in the middle of the night, Oric, um, he, uh, I called out to my orb to demand that I uh, was able, was given, a, was given vision or or sight or scrying of my daughter. The orb demanded that uh, in order to attain this vision, I must allow it to see everything I see. And uh, I, it compelled me to lift the orb to my eye. And I tried to, you know, cleanly just use my magic to suck my own eye out of its socket and put the orb in. But it was like, no, no, do it the old fashioned way. And there was a brutal scene of Auric taking his only weapon other than his magic, a little dagger, and cutting his own eye out very in oryx not a surgeon uh he's a magic boy but he's not a surgeon so that was rough so future art of oryx is gonna have some some eye scarage uh, and then the his orb shrunk down and I, I put that in and replaced my eye and then i passed out um probably from all the trauma of carving my own eye out um uh but uh we awoke the next morning to just as nova said the um uh, Sanguinar of, of Etrelon coming to take us away for our crimes. But beyond that, after we were taken away, we were given a glimpse of Nia. Um, a peculiar, strange individual named Sam had come to her in the night, um, who started talking about his family and how he's been watching her and how she should join his family. He had a real Manson vibe. Um, and uh, and then um, we cut away from that after he had given her this proclamation, this offer of joining them, um, joining him and his family. Uh, and I think uh, that's everything. Yeah, that's pretty much everything. I think that covers everything important anyway. Might be a little bits here and there, but, but everyone can learn that as we go. All right, so. You're currently in a caravan, uh, trundling along, sort of at the edge of the forest. It's probably a bit tight for you, Sloan, with, with four people in the back of this. Um, the first day in the caravan passes that instant. They don't let you out until nightfall uh, when they're making camp. You're allowed to relieve yourselves, get food, whatnot, and then you're ushered back into the caravan where you spend the night. Is there anything you want to do during this day of travel? The guards will be unresponsive, and unless you try to leave the caravan, they'll ignore you for the most part. Um, the sound of beating wings is your constant companion as the sanguinar circle above. Uh, so, Leaf, you're the one closest to the window. What do you want to do? Uh, I think... I, I don't think Leaf would really be doing anything. I, I think I think Leaf is... If, if He would have tried his luck with the guards if they were unresponsive. Uh, he'd just have his 
hat down over his eyes, trying to get a nap. I look at okay. my bag. Are there any? We have our bags. Bag. Do they take it? Uh, they. Oh, they did I leave it on the you... ship? Oh, uh, yeah, you did. You, you, you would have left it in the ship. Jacko is you going to deliver everything to us in a few days. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we oh, only have whatever no. was on us when we woke up, essentially. Yeah. So I imagine you guys would have grabbed, like, a weapon or a spell book or whatever you need in that regard. <laughs> yeah, a rock. And they don't seem... <laughs> yes. They don't seem to fuss with you having them, uh, just because of the sheer amount of people you have around you. Do you guys talk about anything or just sit there in sullen silence as the day goes by? So we're gonna... It's very squished. I don't like it. Where are we going? We're Seems going like to... on some kind of suicide mission. I'm not saying the least, considering the enemy they want us to face. Anything you can uh, fill us in on, or... Yes, I want to well, know what's I've... happened to your eye. I, my eye is, I, I, I still have an eye. It's fine. It's all good. That's not the eye I'm talking about. Well, yes, I, I guess. Which eye did you just point to? Did you point to your, your, your stone eye or your real eye? Uh, well, I, I pointed in the sense of uh, I want to know what happened to your other real eye. Why was I holding an eyeball? Uh, I may, I'm well, still curious about now. the first eye, but, uh. It's part of my experiments, that's all. I don't believe you. Uh, I need to keep the orb safe from Saros's sticky fingers. So you decided to put it in your face? I could have held it for you. Anyway, I think what is more pressing is these bastard five we are tasked with destroying. I have only heard of one that had come through in my youth in this world the figure was absolutely unstoppable they could could not be harmed they murdered many they killed some of the most powerful wizards that i have ever known in my life that i learned much from they drive victims to madness strong enough to rip columns from the earth. They're humanoid in form. Maybe a bit bigger, if my memory holds. Uh, There's always five of them. I mean, what is their purpose? What what kind of goals do they achieve? I mean, if this empire is so scared of them, uh, certainly... The uh, enemy of my enemy is my friend. Or well, could be. All I know is the one that I heard of was called Madness. What? I don't know. They don't. There was no clear understanding of what they wanted, other than the destruction of everything in their path. Ah, well. Maybe not the friendliest type, then. And we okay. are supposed to... What? Kill them? Kill them. The unstoppable, invincible, murderous, superhumanoids. Nigh invincible. Nigh invincible. It's, a, it's an important distinguishment. There's always five of them, which they would only need to say... If they were somehow killable, you can't replace them. I mean, unless they quit. If they're it's, training in new ones, then, uh, you know, one of them's got to go somehow. It is a good observation, Leaf. And to your right, they do maintain the roster of five bastards. And they must replace them if they die or are vanquished. But what I am saying is, for my observations, the mages who tried to stop them when I was in my tutelage, were far stronger 
than any of us here. And they ripped through them like paper. What, what about all of us? Any of us, sure. Those mages. Uh, I mean, I've seen on Sloane rip through a few people like paper myself. This was one of the five that ripped through these mages. Well, there are well, four of us and I can take two. Does that math? Yes, that math works. That's fine. I think we need to be careful with this mission. We need to see what, and Oric would hush his tones, what restrictions they put on us. If they wish for us to hunt them, and they are so scared of them, that I'm not sure what sort of uh, insurance they will place on us to ensure that we die or are successful. Yeah, uh, save some magic. I think uh, it's possible that a very convenient and fictional death might be the best way forward, or at least the easiest way. I I've died in a lot of places, in, in a fake way, only only the real way, the one time. It gets you out of quite a few scrapes. They let us go. We say, oh, we'll go take them out. Uh, it's a lot easier to, you know, fake the scene of a grisly massacre than it is to take down some nigh-unstoppable force. I have always they may wanted to escort see the desert. To it. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you'd, you'd do well there. Especially in that current form. There's a lot of uh, coverings. Yeah. They're quite in fashion. We will need to be very careful with whatever observations they may place on us. They are clearly are not using a light hand it comes to bringing us in. And I sh assure you that this mission, I think in their minds, it's, well, most likely it'll take care of these nuisances of our empire, but they at least see some strength in us. So perhaps we can leverage this. The sun is starting to set it's getting towards the uh, the evening the night and the caravan pulls to a halt you can hear them starting to work up the fences a campfire eventually start to hear and smell the roasting meat a knock is on the door and the face looks in, doesn't say anything. Make sure you're paying attention. And then opens the door and there is 10 knights in a sort of ring around the cart all watching you. And they just point to where food is being served. Leaf hops out right away. Does right behind him. A huge stretch. <laughs> third in line. <laughs> Not even really acknowledging, just kind of like, I don't know if they've got spears out or anything, but he's poking his finger on the edges of spears as he goes, kind of testing the sharpness and sits down. Starts eating. They shall. Alright, so you'll sit down and start eating. And uh, Raphael is going to move over. like, I hope yes, your chapel is comfortable. You are rested for what's coming ahead. It is a bit squished for me, but I think everybody else is okay. Well, it is a uh, seven day journey to Echelon. Will you be okay for that length of time? Seven days of squished? I don't think so. But uh, perhaps that... some separate carriages, maybe uh, some fine uh, silk linens. Could... Uh... More likely, I could cuff you to the back of a horse and uh, have you walk behind. But it is uh, decidedly messier. 
I don't think I would like that. Perhaps if we need you to do want us base. in good shape to fight your bastard five. Well, you will be given a couple of days to rest. When you reach Eterlon, it will be comfortable. We have state rooms that you can spend some time in. I believe there is a person there that will represent you. But for now, you must travel and must be kept fit and well. We will give you 10 minutes to stretch, eat. Do whatever you need to do. In the morning, you will get the same, and maybe half an hour to exercise. And you have uh, Sounds like yes. you're going to take fine care of us. Are you planning well, to uh, equip us for this journey at all? You'll be given a chance to top. To others find representatives that will be able to outfit you with whatever you need okay you will be somewhat auctioned off to the highest bidder the highest what? bidder in what sense well you will be hired as a band of mercenaries working for uh in part to come but there are always extra jobs around and it is usually best to get such a well criminal assholes uh, to be kept by one of the else you will be in their care if you make any sort of mistakes it will fall on their head but they also will have the power of life and death over you if you upset them too much, you might find yourself without the head. I don't like that either. Well, it's either that or I take you straight from the cut right to your execution. Understand, you are criminals and you have, you have hurt a great many people. Anything you I give you is... Uh, luxury. Anything we give you is a luxury. You don't have any place here to negotiate. I mean, I believe the initial what? agreement was we completed this job for you. We kill the Bastard Five, and in exchange we're given our freedom. But now we are being additionally sold as some sort of chattel slaves, uh, as a band of mercenaries to random houses as well? Well, you can call it whatever you want, but what is happening is, yes, once you have have driven off or defeated or killed the bastard five, you will be given your freedom. But until that happens, someone has to take care of you, and I'm not fucking doing it. So, I try to be nice about this, but... I don't know what we're taxes are going towards, then. We can I take care of that ourselves. I mutter that under my breath to leave. <laughs> <laughs> don't think it's about whether or not we can take care of ourselves. It is about whether they want to take up space in their dungeons. And we are a valuable resource for them to make money for the crown. He's quiet. But we took out a bigger threat, did we not? The sign of justice is technically what? a scale, but they never use the scale. It's always weighted to the side of the bad. We cannot have you running around, possibly causing trouble for, you know, the entire empire. So, this is the plan. You will be given a chance to work towards your freedom. You will be uh, kept by a house. They will pay you well. Usually, mercenaries get bags of gold a month. You will be able to walk away from this very rich if you survive. That's what I meant by I.S. Bidder. You get Big to choose which else to belong to. Big this is why I like bids. choosing our own jobs. Yes. I like to choose okay, my own well, jobs too. There are some that will have no link to you whatsoever. 
There are also going to be some that add friends in Anklheim and around where you have caused a great many problems. Some will eat you and only want to use you to kill you. Others will want to use you for nefarious means and get what they want and others will try to use you and pay well to get you to do things for the greater good. I understand this is an odd sell for you, but it's also the only option you have. We were coming for you. Our allies were coming for you. Apparently you had murdered someone in Duskfall? Yeah, Raphael it was, right? <laughs> Elbow what is it, into the ribs. <laughs> 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 what uh what is it exactly that you've heard about us i heard that a band of mercenaries had they had killed people in alcohol a male is wizard they had hurt a lot of the servants of the mayor's household, they had fled after doing great amount of damage to the town. They passed through the Elven Forest, the Crystal Forest, heading north at uh, Seifeld, I believe it was, you killed guards. There was also the unexplained murder of a noble and a wizard there from maybe a month beforehand, and I'm pretty sure that was you too. People matching your descriptions were seen as the area. Not not you, and he points to Slime. But there had been a cat man and a man in a star cloak. From there you went off to a port town, Malisa, and you burnt down a tavern? Well, <laughs> to be fair, that was a Sanguinar that was sent to retrieve you, but still, if you had not been there and you had not tried to resist, this would not have happened. So, from there you went to Duskfall, yes? That was where you were? Yeah, and none of this... There was no talk of a large burning demon or any sort of uh, village that may have been helped out from dragon attacks or perhaps I, I, none, of, none of that happened to make it also, into those you want, tales. I can give it to you in order of importance or chronologically, but I'm obviously going from when you started to now if you want to talk about the fact that Apparently, uh, with your intervention, that a, a great green dragon is no longer uh, pestering the elves, which is has pestering. done you uh, good. Well, the elves would refuse us to uh, move through their forest, and now they are more amenable. So, there are some that see your... So you're welcome. Oh, to the dragon? Yes, to you. We're not sure if you knew this intentionally or if we weren't entirely unhappy with the dragon causing problems for the elves, but we did not want it to turn to us, so the fact that it was resolved in the time it was, was helpful. But there is something to be said about your work there. And it has garnered you some respect some goodwill, and it is the main reason for your pardon. The Bastard 5 is perhaps the other 40% of the reason you will be getting it, if it happens. If you survive. That's all, okay, well, thank you for that. I just wanted to know how much of a blind eye you were turning to, you know, the other stuff. If you need a tool, you oh, know. You, you murdered a, an Escadalian and a Caronian in, in Duskfall as well. Apparently it was bolts found in, in the four, four people, which, uh, from what I understand, only one of you is a uh, crossbowman. 
This is a awful lot of circumstantial evidence with no real link to us in any way, but I believe we're in um, your you, land, uh, so... You you realize magic exists, right? We have divination wizards that we can call on to, to verify all of this. But you haven't We're under that. the same lockdown as everyone else because of the... Well, the dwarves are being assholes and done a lockdown on magic, which is part of the problem. If we want to trade, we cannot use our magical might as best we could, which is limiting yes, let's our just defenses against the Spy on everybody with divination wizards, learn all their secrets, and lock them up whenever it is convenient. A fine empire you lead. Unfortunately, that is... The evolving nature of warfare when we have magic reinserting itself into our world. Yeah. If, if only there were some me, marauding just... group who was going around actually doing something about that. Wouldn't that be nice? Ah, he sees, he sees the Leaf, point that, here. Isn't that us? Very clever. It's us. Hey, just, just, just get a deadpan look from Raphael at Sloan. Anyways, um, yes, that is the point here. You are a group that we can use. That if blame falls, a house will maybe lose some standings, a clan will not. It will be seen as a house hiring a rogue band, and unfortunately, you'll be dismissed. Oh no, your, your payment is severed. What will you do? I mean, what kind of assurance do we have that when all this is over, you're not just going to throw us in a dungeon anyway? <laughs> well, really, I guess there's none, apart from our world. I am a... I give you my oath as a paladin that you will be freed. And if you are not, I will take vengeance on that who has imprisoned you. Does he have a like a holy symbol hanging from him that he, we would he can he can pull it out from under his vest? You can see the chain. You can guess as much. Yeah. Uh, like uh, uh, I guess in general religion, would I know what god he serves? Just from looking at uh, it. It. It'd be kind of hard to tell. He's probably going to be one of um, law, justice, something like the paired gods, which is like uh, is is Torm uh, is is one of them. Um, sorry, Tyr is one of them. Uh, uh, he might be I a just, follower. I just asked Hera, then, uh, he might be yeah, a follower. A, a holy man's word means a lot to some, but who do you swear by? I swear by the bloody end of judgment. Lord, How Lord our word is our bond. Law is law. Hmm. You love to hear it. And Leaf's just gonna go get back in the carriage. And except for the laws of others. Yeah. Saros just points up to the sky and then turns turns to Yael and goes back into the carriage as well. Uh, do the rest of you move back in the carriage? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll start moving back into the carriage and I'll kind of, uh, he's just saying on, on the way over, uh, well, don't get me wrong, R Raphael, I respect what you're doing and you're seizing your empire seizing of your own destiny but you could get us another cart <laughs> and i'll get in the cart as i'm getting in the cart i'll say to nobody in particular um is this is this what the world is always like because if it is i think i'd rather go back to my tribe at least i chose what i got to do there The world is only like this uh, when you are murderers, criminals, thieves, 
unfortunately you do not get a choice on your actions once caught. I don't I think would suggest quite... you try to do more. I don't think that describes us. Are you sure? When you go back in there and sit down and rest your head for the night, take a good long think about the things you have done, where you're going, what you're doing. Here you will be saving potentially thousands of people from death, a gruesome bloody death at the hands of the five. But by your own admission, we also may be doing the various things for the highest bidder. But hey, law is law. Not all houses are as not all houses are as honorable honorable as mine. But you'll serve them nonetheless. Will you be bidding? I will serve house, my house, and I'll serve the clan. I would rather not see you again, but my house does have an interest in seeing certain promises come to pass. Well, but I appreciate your approach to acquiring us over the last Sanguinar who came after us. At least you didn't burn down a village or the Arco ship or a tavern we were in. I think you are also... Firstly, I guess you're welcome, but you are misunderstanding this is bitter thing. You all get to choose which else you serve. We are not... You will present your skills. Explain what you do. The houses will bid, tell you what they want from you, and you get to choose. So, really, you are getting to choose the job, just what we are getting out of it is the knowledge that you are in the house, that will be taken care of you, and there's the blame for any faults you cause. Uh, so it is, is that a, the highest bid little? get them into the slate, not necessarily claim. Well, the highest bid, uh, I thought you are... Maybe I got you mistaken. I, you, I thought you mostly worked for gold. You had no interest in doing the right thing. Oh, this you got this no is bids for us to receive this gold. I thought the crown was well, taking it all. Yes. We get a stipend, but you get a majority. We take 25%. Well, I'm a little bit more. We asked to this now. Oh, I really I hope think, your uh, house the understanding is... buys this up. I can't wait for you to take the fall for I what I'm going to do to you. I hope it's not my house because I would have to be a representative to talk to you and I do not want to see any of you again if I can help it. The opening bid to help you understand how much gold you are likely to get is... To enter, to, to be able to sit at the seat here is, is 10,000 gold. Saros tries to hide his face and he can't. goes to you. Anyways, I think this is enough. Get back in your cart. I will not be talking to you tomorrow. I have a scout who will be taking me to see the edges of the forest. You'll be opening the doors. We'll eat your return before you get half an hour of exercise. But if you try to lose the the border of the uh, ring set up for you, you will be chased down. Alright, so I imagine you are now fully on the car because I don't think Slime was quite in there yet. Alright, so, Night Falls. Uh, are you all going to sleep or is someone staying awake? Because, you know, you actually have some protection now. I guess this is like the first night in a long time where it hasn't been like constantly things are out to get you because now there's 50 <laughs> knights and five like demi-angels in between you and the things trying to get to you. I think Sloan would stay awake. She's trying to make sense of everything. This is This is very confusing for her. I feel like 
Sloane's sitting there just trying to get past. Like, she's trying to understand all these concepts, but the one thing in her head is like, why is there no creme brulee? I have a bag that's meant to make creme brulees. Yeah. <laughs> so Hunter, she's really sad that she doesn't have that right now. Yeah, I imagine Auric would wake up to answer, or stay awake to answer any questions Sloane has. <laughs> why don't I have my, cre my creamy brulees? <laughs> But you have to understand that they are being made by an individual across the, uh... I mean, it is quite an interesting bag that you have, and it is a, an anomaly I have been meaning to study. Oh, Rick, that was a... What do you call it? A... Rhetoric question? A... Have you remembered that word? Yes, Rhetorical. I don't think I said... That's it, that's it. Rhetorical. A rhetorical question, yes. I, though I'm still quite interested in explaining the uh, spatial anomaly that is this bag and the way that it's, uh, you know, there's some sort of semi, uh, demi plane Are we from bad there people? that is holding the... Auric? I, you know, I hate it when I don't finish a thought. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I, I promised I wouldn't do that anymore. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay, Sloan. But who's, you know, what are good people, really? Bad people. I mean, we're all trying uh, our best. But that men kept calling us criminals and murderers and... Well... I don't know. We I thought we were helping save people. Perhaps in the recent months we have but Sloane remember the conversation we had in the forest we have to choose to be better if we want others to see us that way well how can we choose You're... if they're making us making us choose all the other things that does not make any sense no I don't want to be forced to choose I want to choose my own thing You're not wrong, but we are bound, unfortunately, to the laws of the lands we travel. And we didn't leave Atridale soon enough. I'll admit what we've done here has been not always the most perceptive on our end for collateral damage. Uh, it's only something, uh, admittedly, I've really only recently concerned myself more with. We've hurt people, yes. We've saved people, yes, but it doesn't matter to a man like him. Leaf said something about scales. If we do more good, will that outweigh the bad? Well, I suppose that depends on what moral philosophy you prescribe to. Uh, some I would say this, yes. I don't know what you just said. Oh, well, you know, some some might say that you know if you prescribe to a a moral philosophy that the you know as long you as what you're doing is not harming anyone. Parts. So you, you good and bad, uh, good and bad uh, uh, perspective um, study. Uh, how you live your life, values, what you cherish, why you do the things that you do. Um, but some might believe within moral philosophy that uh, as long as you do more good than bad, I suppose, your scale will equal out or balance towards good. But it's a matter of perspective. Are you scared for... What is going to happen? I think I'm scared.
No. No, I am not scared. Why not? I don't suppose... Saro... Saros's, uh... Faith might be rubbing off on me. But... Well... We'll make it out of this. Made it out of hell before. We brought Leaf back to life. I suppose... Politics... It's just the next challenge. I think that is all my questions. Besides, tens of thousands of gold will certainly be helpful in my research, and I think uh, only good can come from that. As long as you don't do anything more to your gladstones. He knows. He knows what what he has involved himself in. Besides, Just I can't, I can't properly research on Gladstone while his. Well, just because he knows doesn't mean that he wants to. Well, I have to involve Saros to do this any further. Look we'll at your spells back. He didn't do it on purpose. I don't know that entirely for sure, but I suppose I should trust him. I'll give them back. I know he will. Hey, uh, Saros, you have a really high passive perception. I yeah, want you to roll. My wisdom's a... all donked up from those spells. <laughs> I know. I want still, you, to you probably roll... still got a crazy one. Yeah. Right? I want you to roll a perception check to see if you wake up the talking, and then just if you do, if that sounds enough to wake you up, you can just. Be awake and listening into this entire exchange. Oh, Roll the twenty-one. I'm actually. Uh. Yes. Continue. Yeah, I rolled the twenty-one, so I'm gonna say that Saros has probably heard a bit of this, but has opted to yeah. stay silent throughout. This is probably right. You probably would have woken up about a third of the way through the conversation and just kind of sat there listening. Um, okay. Do you guys keep talking or kind of just sit in silence? Companionable silence and uh, slowly fall asleep? Yeah. Okay. Companionable silence. So sun rises and the doors open. No fail. Just a man that points you towards the food. And you can see that they've now got a larger ring set up. And there's just enough room for you to stretch and around. Spa, whatever you guys want to do with each other. But the guards will not get involved. Is there a tree I do? could go hit or something? No. I don't, I don't think... I don't think any of them could spar with me. Or would want to. So, just like <laughs> push-ups in in the center of this ring. Is that all this is for you? I oh, guess goodness. so. <laughs> oh goodness! Yeah. So many push-ups. <laughs> just all the push-ups and <laughs> I don't. Yeah, maybe I don't know. But it's maybe like finding a a a branch, a fallen branch, a log that I could press, maybe. You're, you're at the edge of the forest, but like a couple hundred meters, you know, a couple hundred yards in, but like away from it. Probably don't need branches. You could like ask someone to go get one, but they just ignore you. You pretty much just sit there. Like, Can I get, get one myself you know, then? Can I go rip it off the tree? It'll be two seconds. Uh, three of them that are in front of you, like, just put their hand on their swords. Like, if you try to get through us, we'll have to stop you. But you can come with me. I, I just, I did... <sighs> Sounds like I get cranky when I have too much energy. Partner. I mean, <laughs> gotta get my exercise just, in. Just <laughs> level stare. Uh, Leaf is gonna walk up next to Sloane 
and kind of like flexing the fingers on his demon arm is going to just like look at one of the branches and I'm going to uh, like flex the demon arm and just a wreath of flame comes around it and I'm going to whip that wreath of flame out, <laughs> grab a branch off of a tree and whip it back using the I'm using a charge it. of my arm. I forgot you uh, had that. Oh. Or it's gonna look to go at, or it's gonna look at their faces and, as and I can like... without doing damage. How bad, how bad do you think oh. he's going to be beat for that? Ooh. Roll a attack That's for me. Because currently Oric just has Saros' arm in his lap and he's reading his spells <laughs> off of it to prepare for the day. <laughs> I wanna uh, I wanna try and catch it when I, it comes I, back. I apologize to everyone watching that you can't see the rolls uh, today. We did have a setup with the previous tech, but he was having a few tech issues, so we've moved to a uh, to, to agent, and we don't have it uh, set I up can, right now because it's a bit hasty. I can transition to the roll page, actually. Uh, if you want to, there's just a bunch of crap all over. I think at the moment. It's so just it's not, not the most there. interesting to look at compared to the stat cards. There's no map or anything right now. So. <laughs> nah, just 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 call out the numbers. It's fine. Just 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 we'll tell. Just say what the numbers are. So make make so your, your roll there. Like 13. Uh right, so a branch doesn't have a whole lot of AC, you know, you, you get the branch. The problem is, um, they kind of one of them like jumps at you to to knock you down. The other one whirls around to see what's going on and gets a branch to the face. <laughs> um and Sloan, you have a branch. It weighs about fifteen pounds, maybe. Okay. Well, now um, they're so not enough to bench press. It's very, very light. Uh, What's there? And now they're on my. Now friend, I can right? make. T- <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I can. I can make. I can make an attack roll here if you want, or a bunch of them. But more or less, you've just got ten knights just like beating you down with the pommels and weapons. Do you submit to this? Just like just curl up in a ball and. You know. Hey, or leaf. Or, or you want to, leaf. Well, if they're hitting him, I'm going to try and get him off. Uh, Le- Leaf would like... <laughs> Leaf would just, just take it. He was just trying to help. And would be pushing, like, okay. holding his hand out to Sloan to keep... To be like, don't worry about it. No! Are you gonna, are you gonna intervene <laughs> in this, Sloan? Yes! <laughs> He's my friend, Breakfast and he was just helping. One okay. gravity fish um, of Saros. <sighs> A sanguinar drops down right next to you, and it's at the tip of its blade is a little tiny bead of fire. And where where Leaf's hand is up, he just like points his blade at the hand and just looks at you levelly. With his other hand, he's gonna point back to where the food is. Move now. I can speak. Who's who's he saying that to? To yeah, Sloan. Who's he saying that to? Oh, it's me. To Sloan, since he's looking at you, he's got a, a a fireball prepped to just obliterate Leaf and a bunch of guards, but he doesn't really care, and telling you to back away, or you'll get the same. Leaf, are you okay? And Leaf is, you know, spits out a mouthful of blood uh, and just looks up. He's like, oh, never been better. You know, it's not like I got lightly tapped in the face by a branch, you (laughs) goddamn kittens. Well, thank you for helping. I offered them to help, but they said no, and now here we are. (sighs) What do you do, Slane? You're gonna take a step back. Okay. Well, Leaf, you're down about a quarter of your hit points in non-lethal damage. Um, Sloan, you have a 15 pound branch. What are the rest of you doing? <laughs> uh, while, while I'm reading my spells off of Saros' arms and watching this circus happen, and imagine it's, it's almost as if Auric is like palm reading on <laughs> <laughs> on Saros, but it's just like, oh, what do I, I don't remember the 
reagents for this spell and it's and he's kind of like rubbing it and like <laughs> stretching your skin out to try it which i'm sure it's just like gross it's super gross too to touch um quite the predicament we are in Saros. this mm, yes but i don't know can't be the worst i mean as long as we can keep leaf and sloan from getting themselves killed we can at least make it to the city You're a zealot. What do you make of these zealots? I think their vision has been a little corrupted, to say the least. A paladin of law knowingly following such poor examples of the law. Ironic that they seek to, uh, you know, help others in, uh, by helping just a small group. They don't seem to realize that what we do is for a greater picture than they understand. This is always well, the problem that's... with zealots. Well, something that we agree upon. Although I do see the logic of their arguments within their own structures, in their own systems. Well, certainly, I mean, uh, there's no question that we did commit a very large amount of crimes, but their evidence on the matter is, well, shaky. Well, concerning that they don't understand the full extent of our destruction in Ankarum, the threat that was already there is a big blind spot on their understanding, even within their own logic, logical structures, because I can't blame them for their own structures though I can judge them quietly. As you guys are talking, all of a sudden, you hear the sound of hoops, and everyone starts quickly ushering you back towards the carts as four riders come in over the, um, the, the back of one of the horses is a woman with red hair who is bound and gagged. Perception check if you want to try to recognize the woman, but I'm sure you can figure it out. Uh, well, I just feel bad for her. I mean, I barely knew her. <laughs> well, I do hope they didn't. Uh, they must have seen her uh, leading us That's to the natural. village. And I mean, it could be a granted, bit. Granted, I guess. Uh, maybe she committed her own crimes. Uh, they did eat chestnut and smoky. I could imagine <laughs> there chestnut. could be some. Some, but I imagine in that situation, of their, their own laws and strictures, that she would just owe a horse to someone else, which we should actually perhaps bring that up once we get to Etrelone. Perhaps mm -hmm. we can get to... Uh, they did pull us what so does. out of the woods. I, I think she's pretty even keel with us at this point. Yeah. Takes time right. for the wounds to heal of a lost loved one, but... Uh, yes. So as you... And now gather around the cart, and Raphael arrives. He, uh, you know, sort of not not quite shoving her off the back of the horse, but you know, dropping to the ground, not not too harshly. Wouldn't hurt you too too much, like dip it up. Is this one that was was you? She was spying on us from the edge of the forest. There's no reason to be out here by yourself. Usually, she's she's a wood elf. Elves aren't in packs. Yes, but they never travel alone. But this is the wood. <laughs> and that's a crime? Well. <laughs> Can I do anything to get out of my bonds, or have I been, like, demagicked? How would you like to get out of your bonds? Uh, I'm looking. <laughs> Give me a minute. Uh, wait, uh, am I bound with rope or chain? Rope. I could druid craft a flame to burn the rope. That is something I can do. I mean, sure, that seems like the wisest choice possible. Surrounded well, by armed men, <laughs> I will I let know, you man. do whatever just, you kidnapped. want to do. 
You did get kidnapped uh, by four horsemen riding you down. Yeah, like I'm. There's not a way I can fucking spit the gag out, can I? So I can try and explain what the hell's going on. Make a dexterity check at disadvantage to dex the gag out of your mouth. I mean, we're definitely going to need another cart. She's got like seven wolves with her. And... They are yeah. not with her. Oh. That's God, a six. That's a fail. So you just kind of see her sputtering about. The reason she has been captured is that the writer that came and informed us that you had uh, returned to port said that there was a red-haired elven woman with you. She is considered an accomplice. Well, she certainly was showed us. As a... How did Yako yes. get out of this? I just <laughs> turn and look at. He like, used to he used to be a defender for the king, didn't he? So oh yeah, you're right. You're right. You're he's right, got right, connections. Yeah. Uh, Yako cannot be held. He's a shadow man, so it's too odd. And on top of that, he more or less has diplomatic immunity as a former bodyguard to the Elven Emperor. <sighs> and I do not want to be on the bad side of this ship. No. <laughs> Tell me That's about it. Of... That is true. Well, this woman did show us through so... the woods. She simply paid us a kindness for the for the damage she had accidentally done to our horses. She had no part in our crimes, she just escorted us back to town. She had no idea what we had done. Hmm. Uh, Assuming the... we had done anything at all. She had no idea about any uh, activities we, we ever are... engaged in before meeting her. We are standing orders to imprison most of the elves that we come across, due to the fact that they consider themselves at war with us. It is very hard to do anything in the vicinity of, of the world. So, you will be brought back to Retrolon. It is not my place to speak to a elephant question, but you will be given over to interrogation and most likely set free if you are innocent. I can't I can't say anything back. <laughs> I'm just like trying to get this fucking gag off. Yep. Hmm. So oh, well, at least she has a you chance. are placed in the now extra squishy back of the caravan where the well, others can gonna, help you with the gag and ropes. I was gonna ask if I could walk. I'm not done exercising and I just wanna walk next to the cart. Because I didn't get my full workout in, and I'm feeling like I have energy to spend. Uh, and I'll ask him my nicest, walk my, my nicest horse? voice. No, just next to the cart, okay. next to my friends. That is not an option. It is behind the also in the cart. I won't do any. I just need Cannot to walk. Trusted? You, your, your, your prisoner. You do not get the choice. It has to be made for you. It is. Can I walk behind the cart? Behind the... That's it. That's kind of a mix of both. You seem like. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have, and he gets a rope, ties it to the back of a saddle, and then has a night ride behind the cart. So you are walking next the to the next to the night. Uh, it's not quite moving at a walking pace. It's like uncomfortably. You've been uncomfortable walk. You like that half it's, walk, it's half like jog. Keep up. It's fine. It's fine. Got some energy to burn off. Yeah. Just you're gonna be out there for about nine to ten hours. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a day. Well, <laughs> mate, better than being mate. squished. <laughs> Well, she's gonna smell you know, really doing bad when she comes back. In Make here. some dexterity save. Yeah. Oh goodness. It was the so, dagger move. So I put in the cart. Yeah, just I'm just gonna I'm just gonna finish this thing with Sloane, and we'll get to your particular mess. 
Um, <laughs> make four constitution saves. One for every two hours you're jogging behind this. You got... Oh, my con is horse. good. Okay, the first one oh, is a 23. 13. Jesus, yep. Second one is a 28. <laughs> so you're still it's fine. Christ, Sloan. Third is a 12. Ooh. That's not so good. Yeah. All right. And the last one is a dirty 20. Okay. Uh, make three dexterity saves. Dex saves. Not oh, so good I at know, these. Right? Natural 20 for 23. For the first one. I'll consider two. Do I to do I need to save. keep rolling? You get to make <laughs> one more save instead of two more saves. Cool. And that's only because you failed Rolls one of the con saves. No, that one is an eleven. Ooh. All right. Um. Yep. Yeah, so just want it to when exercise. you well, you I, did. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you did exercise. Um. <laughs> You stumble and sort of half fall, and the horse sort of like stops track and then just keeps pulling. So you are tied behind a horse. Oh. And expect just to back on your feet, and Badly. you're dragged for a good 60, 70 feet, bouncing along, trying to get up, falling over, trying to get up. Um, you're also pretty much just by it because you're behind a convoy of knights in the middle of convoy of knights and a wagon and it's not going across like at some points they're not following roads you're just like it's just muck to like mid thigh um you smell like a stable that hasn't been cleaned for a week so um cool that'll be nice yep <laughs> yeah but you gotta go you gotta exercise so i'm very um, grumpy <laughs> i can imagine very grumpy Back inside the cart, does anyone help Aurelia with her gag and bonds? Yeah, I think a quick, uh, quick claw can get rid of that. Okay. <laughs> oh my god! What? What, what happened? What? Why? Why did I just get dragged out of my woods? And why are you in a convoy? Who are you? What did you do? <laughs> Uh, allegedly or, or really? I mean, we're in the cart <laughs> for one reason, and uh, what we actually did is is a different different reason. And you definitely within the don't... logics of this country, they are the same. <laughs> what did you do? Let's go with allegedly. Uh, we allegedly, uh, yes, saved a town from a demon, uh, saved a forest from a dragon, and a few people died during those things. Yes, I believe I explained it as we need to crack a few eggs to make an omelette. So you cracked a few eggs and then got an entire army sent after you. Is that what you're telling me? And because you cracked a few eggs, you have now dragged me out of my home. Well, I mean, they dragged you. Just to be clear they... on that, I, we didn't have anything to do with that. We are being dragged I... as well. Uh, unfortunately, I, I think you might be one of their eggs. Yes, that is exactly yeah, very good. Yes. Do I see my wolf spirit anywhere, Nova? Is, is he squished into the cart? The the ethereal wolf spirit that's always with you? Yes. Uh, yes. It's more or less like no one else can really feel it because ethereal, but it's laying across everyone's laps with this giant head on your, your legs. How close is Saris to me? Because I'd like to not be within two feet of him or he'll eat my magic. You don't know that, so no. You don't. <laughs> you're sitting right next to him and too bad. Um, so hungry. <laughs> Wait, I, I saw that being next to him did something weird with my magic. I saw that in the intermission. You actually did. Yeah. There were some sparkles did, actually. coming off of her wolf towards me. And I noticed it was the same color as my 
my ethereal wolf. Yeah, okay, too bad. It's, he's still sitting next to you. You don't really get a choice. Again, this is a, this is a thing. When you're imprisoned and put in for travel, it's not like, I'd like to sit at the front of the bus, teacher. It's like, no, just get the fucking... Just get the bus. Get the bus. Yeah, sit every, down, everything's up. two feet away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Didn't even do anything. We are being treated as a swarm right now, and we're all occupying each other's <laughs> space. <laughs> so, so who on earth did you manage to kill that got an army sent after you? Well, that demon that Leaf explained was turned out to be an official of this, uh, of the state of Etredel. Uh, no, I think he's. The, I think that's the main. He's probably the main reason. Well, I imagine. I it's amazing. I really feel like I, I could have kept just robbing my way through life if I'd just become some sort of middling politician. She just like, uh, you know how like when you, you pull your like knees up to your chest and she just puts her arm, like folds her arms and just for like a solid like five minutes. Just exasperation. Okay. So, you've pretty much you've been through one day. I'm not going to rob that every day. But you get the general gist of this being a case of they're making sure you eat, that you, you know, you're fed and have water and can move around a little bit, but not a lot. You've got to get to where you need to go. Is there anything else you want to do during this time? Seven days. I can't remember if I grabbed my sword before we left. Um, or did I leave it? Because I, I remember being afraid of it and not wanting to touch it, so I don't think I grabbed it. Did you give but I'm it not sure I would have let to either. the runesmith to Did I give it to Tom? I think so. Mmm. Yeah, he I think said he was going happens. to come back and give us... Or he came back and gave us more information, right? And then... Yes, yeah, yes. He, we did the ritual on the boat, and I remember the light shot did. up into the sky, and then I gave yeah. it back to us, I think. I don't think you have it, actually, because I think he did all that, but the idea was that he would... Uh, I mean, I can go back and look tomorrow, but I right now... I do believe that it was left on the boat underneath... Under, mm, under I don't think you have it. coat, right? Either yeah. way, I don't think you have it. It's either under my coat in the yeah. boat, or he has it. Coat in the boat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So, is there anything else you want to do for the next few days? No, I can't take care of my wolves. Okay. One of them has a broken leg and I can't do anything. I'm not going to ask to walk again because that was miserable. I imagine we're but all very I uncomfortable learned... with how much she smells on the cart right now. <laughs> yeah. I'll say she is outranking the... Theros's odor right now. And that, that on is the a third day. But anytime you're... somebody tries to tell me about it, I glare at them. <laughs> on the third day, you'll be sort of like washed down. Just you see the. Here's a stream, wash yourselves, and if you don't, they're just gonna like throw buckets of water at you. Okay. So, during these days, there's a few things that happen. Sloan, hmm. you have more or less constant nightmares, and they seem to get worse and worse, and you keep reaching up to where your sword is and every time it's not there you feel like pain shoot through your arm and chest almost like you're having withdrawals you have just nightmares of your arms and face soaked in blood of all the people that you kill and this shadow version of yourself telling you to be stronger except the rage i imagine <laughs> <laughs> I have, I like move around and like accidentally punch something, <laughs> somebody, <laughs> while I'm sleeping. <laughs> so sorry, sorry. I wasn't sleeping. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Auric, during sorry. your uh, meditative trance that you would probably do as opposed to actual full sleep, although you can full sleep if you wish. You sit there and as like your eyes close for a minute you see your daughter maybe just a minute or so a night she is being currently
carried up a mountain. She's been bound tight. She is uh, on a sort of like stretcher or like set of poles, which is on the shoulders of two sort of like the furry creatures that you saw when you're fighting Kinora. She's in motion, you're not sure where. You asked to see your daughter. Now you're seeing your daughter. On the fifth night, you hear this clattering, shittering noise for it. You'd probably be the only other one awake. And then there's a heavy thud as something hits the caravan, followed by a scream. War cries ring out, and there's a hissing noise. It's like a stampede of, of chitinous feet empty out of the forest. Uh, who's trying to look out the window most right now, you think, is all woken up by that thud on the caravan? <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll, I'll look out the window. Can I get an opposed strength check between anyone that wants to try to look out the window? Oh boy. Oh yes. Boy. Oh, this is good. There's be a room for one face. That's it. Is this just a check or a. Yep. Mmm. Mmm. Auric. So, okay. You put your face there, and <laughs> Rayleigh just put it, like grabs you with the back of the shirt and just like hauls you back and has a look out. So, Sloan, you just had Auric thrown at you by this new girl. Um, and she's like looking out to see what's happening <laughs> and you see a whole lot of these spider creatures, half elf, half spider, or like, or they're are? spiders with just the face and, and front arms of people. And they're just streaming down and like stabbing at the knights and trying to get to the caravan. Do I know what these are? Do you know vaguely what they are? They're the same things that you guys fought last season or, or, or got to follow Auric. But uh, for your culture, they've been enemies for a very long time. They kidnap your people and turn them into more of these spiders. Mm, do I have... Uh, do they take my staff or do I have it? Uh, you would have it. Don't you hurt my spider maybe do anything stupid. I'm not going. I feel like she would go for her staff, just like out of like a reflex. I'm not firing off any spells. I'm just prepared if those things touch the cart, <laughs> because I don't know the context. Let me see. Let me see. Move. Let me see what is out there. Uh, I, I I move away. Um, do I know what these things are called? Nava or. Uh. You've heard the term drider before, and for everyone, because we haven't got anything rolling on the screen, you must announce your rolls. So just for everyone oh, there, sorry, Auric sorry. got a three and Ralia got a eighteen, which is why that happened the way it did. So sorry. Uh yes, you've heard of driders before, which are usually they're meant to be half drow, half fighter, but these are a bit different. They're made from your people. Yeah, as she moves you know, away, she just uh, says under her breath, driders. Um, okay. when I look out there, does it seem like, I mean, I doubt it, but does it seem like the Driders are doing well? Or are they, I imagine Sanguinars could probably tear through a, quite a bit of their forces. Um, two Sanguinars aim beads of flame down and just obliterate like 20 or 30 that are stampeding down. The, a few get through the Knights. See a few knights fall, but more of the spiders fall. Over the course of about a minute, there's combat, and then it dies off. And you're looking out of the window, and you see maybe 50 or 60 of your spider people dead. For about five I minutes. imagine... Yeah, I imagine while the fires... Anytime the fires are going, like... Like, not, like... Auric is just sort of like watches the entire time. 
He does not turn his eyes away. He watches every single one of them die. Um, he can see. And only occasionally, a few times, at first he has a smile on his face as they're attacking. And then it slowly fades and just turns into a bit of awe at the destruction the Sanguinars can unleash on them. And each night that it happens, they'll slowly so, back away from it. It only happens the one night, but what you do notice is now that you're looking for them, there's always mm -hmm. at least one watching from somewhere, spying. They're not going to be so foolish as to try another attack, but they know where you are, and they're unsure of what's happening. So they're, they're watching. Is the battle between the spiders and the knights over? Over, yes. All we can hear? Yes. Uh, I, I want to go up to the window um, and start pulling. Uh, does anyone need, need any, any any medical help? I can help them. Just, oh, let me out. I'm a medicine woman. This is what I do. Doors don't open. You see the sanguinar lay their hands on some of the knights, impale others through the chest with their swords if they think they are too far gone. I, uh, I need to look at one of my features real quick. I don't think those spiders are going to make it, I'm afraid, lady. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the men. I don't give a damn what happens to the spiders. I care about what happens to the people. By the time you finish saying that so sentence, sorry. anyone out there that's dying is either healed or dead. There's no in-between anymore. I guess I just kind of like slide back down uh, to sit, trying to like looking for my where wherever my 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 uh, my woofer has put his head, even though nobody else can see him. Okay. Days keep rolling by. Seventh day comes around, about midday, when you feel a shadow fall over the car. From the window, because you all were pretty much climbing over leaf he keeps getting sort of put by the window um as the one that made the best argument all the time to anyone it's where the sun's the butt talker. comes in the cat needs to uh, lie in the sun it, yeah and no matter yeah, what direction it's facing like there's always a square and leaf is just climbing over people to get into um, the square real real quick real quick nova um in that in-between day of the six, would I, during our hour of exercise, be able to have potentially noticed this spider watching us? One of the spiders watching us? Mm-hmm. Yep. I, all I would want to do um, is, as soon as I can find them and see them, try to make as much you know eye contest as I can with them to make them, just to, so they know that they're watching me and I can see them. And I would really just uh put my hand out like this and just push it down like that kind of giving yeah. a sense of um stand down okay so shadow falls over the cart leaf you can see at city walls and a creaking sound echoes out as the gate opens caravan moves inside the city you move down a street for maybe 20 minutes before turning south and you start to be able to smell the sea, the ocean. We come to a stop for a building. Saros, with your silly perception, everyone's been healed of their wisdom damage by this point. I was um, just about to ask that. I was like, this is seven days, right? We heal seven wisdom? Yeah. <laughs> you can smell horses and hay and sort of a bit stronger. You're at some sort of the door opens and Raphael is standing there. He's holding a handful of like cloth. And then she puts these on your head and uh, let us guide you to your destination. We are here where your fate will be decided. <clears throat> Just please put some in your head and not make this harder than it has to be. <laughs> 
Sarah's goes Definitely. to say something and then it's just like, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take one begrudgingly. I kind of, I look at, okay. uh, look at Auric kind of just like with the scared look on her face, like, do I do it? Auric would simply nod at her. It's okay. Well, I hope it's not crossbows. So you all have these sacks in your head, and you find yourself taken from the cart, and the sound of a large set of doors opens, and you can feel the texture underneath you change from sort of walking on cobblestones to walking on some sort of tiled floor. And with that, we'll take a break, five minutes, and we'll come in and uh, see what happens now that you're actually in Etrelon. So uh, be back in a second, guys. See you soon. All right. Click. Click. Carl, nice. your mic is breaking. Oh, Carl, your mic is breaking up a bunch. Yeah. Fuck me, yeah. really? Yeah. 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 All right, I'm gonna tell, just, the restroom. Over just here. tell me when it's happening, so I can I can I can try fix it um, on my end too. Okay. Just by doing the unplug replug thing. It's water. Gonna get some water. <laughs> It's such bullshit that it happens, like, I've got all new system, all I imagine we are live, and it's gonna be super awkward for a minute. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Hi! No, uh, we, yeah, mm. So anyways, you guys have just got off a cart, uh, and entered some sort of building. You're all, uh, got hoods over your head, you can't see anything. And Waiting to be shot in the back of the head, the head with a crossbow, you know. Only you. Um, so you turn from where you, are, you look around a corner, and you hear another door open. There is a noise of a chair scraping across the floor, and you hear, "Are the hoods really necessary? You want me to represent these people, and you aren't really doing a good job convincing me they're being well treated." The hoods come off. And you find yourself in a large room with a table and chair in front of you as the guards uh, leave. And Harding looks to you all. Ah, uh, hi, it's been a while. Rianne sent me, told you we we're in a bit of a mess, and I can, I can see that. Uh, seems like you dealt with one of the teams we sent out, though. So that's useful. Uh, it was part of the contract with uh, Old Leaf here. The, uh... The other team we have following a bit of a bit of a dead end rumor that we planted and a colleague of mine set this whole thing up so that you know this meeting and bring bring you here and hopefully getting you off some of these charges but the five really helped cement the idea of giving you a pardon provided you help is that a is that something you think you can do I'm sorry, what the hell is going on? Oh, you're new. Uh, hi, my name's Harding. I, wor I work with <laughs> these guys. Well... Uh, I'm really ill. Uh, I was dragged out of my home. Yes, I understand that they say, uh... That the, the elves are... The, the elves of the forest are at war with Etra, Etradale, and that kind of makes sense. You'd be treated as any sort of, uh, wartime prisoner. They, they tend to be pretty good here. I understand that your people tend to uh, butcher their prisons, so um, I just don't throw stones, glass houses, all that. Be, be, just consider yourself uh, happy that you know, you're being well treated. You know, my wood elf should not paint me with the sins of the of other wood elves. No, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not that your wood elf is your entire culture and the fact that you're on a war footing. I mean, really, uh, you, you approach what's effectively the front lines of a war zone and and thought it would be fine. Did you... This is a line I've been teetering for the for two years, and I have not been dragged out. Well, I mean, you can hide it was really only well. Only after coming it's in that... contact with them, it seems. Did okay, okay. So look, if there's big flappy angels around, don't go spying. It's really easy. <laughs> I... It, it seems as though pretty good her advice. helping us. Her helping us through the forest might have gotten her 
more harshly kidnapped. Okay, I mean, you guys seem competent. How did how did you get wind, wind up with this one? But she got kidnapped. Why they saw did all her the, us. the young elven woman women that you guys come across get like real good at getting kidnapped? We have this hmm. orbit uh, that when people enter it uh, tend to get into trouble. Gravity, you might say. All right. Well. Okay. Okay. Um. Are you telling me this isn't the only person this has happened to with you? I mean, you recall you helped us uh, heal our friend. About the seventh, by my count. Uh... Well. Uh. I guess it comes down to: Do you guys think that you can help against the five? I, look, they... Now, did any of you guys fill in really on who the hell the five is? Uh, Imagine we would have done it over the seven days. Yeah, yeah. Sloan would have, yeah, but somebody else would have. Yeah, you can assume to know what they know. Yeah. Well, from everything that they told us, we don't really have a choice. And I don't know. I don't. I honestly don't know if we can handle them. They sound terrible. Oh, they, they are, but, um, look, we, you guys fought, uh, apparently, you got rid of the, the dragon, and that sort of, you know, uh, sorry to you, Re Relia, yeah, but, uh, you know, weaken the elves, and Etrael seems happy with, with a bit of that, so they're in, seems to be a fairly good mood. The five, um, they are tough, but not tough like the dragon would have been tough. Like, if you fought a dragon, you know, it's still something you can... We did not hurt. kill the dragon. Oh, okay. We banished the dragon. We maybe, we maybe I... killed the dragon. Well, I trust um, saying this to you, Harding, but... Yes, we did not kill the dragon. We, we did send oh, it to hell. Significant. We did take... I mean, we scuffled with it significantly but to be truthful the reckless surging of magic that happened during that fight significantly helped us i don't know if our current standing is strong enough okay. yet i will say well proper provisions and time perhaps we would be capable of slowly eliminating these bastards well then i guess it's even more the case look a, a, a dragon? You you heard it, right? You actually did manage to land some hits on the thing. Or was it just just it showed oh, yes. up and you banished it? No, okay. No, no, no. We, it was a long fight. Well, uh, the five. Not necessarily something you can just go in and fight. Um, got a scout. Maybe plan a skirmish with one of them. See what you can learn. Because if it's a new one, we got no no information. And from there, you're gonna want to, you know, build build a plan. Which, have you heard of any of them? I I, I only know of uh, two myself. The only one I've heard of is Madness. Okay, okay, yeah, I've I've heard of Madness. Been around for a while. Uh, really tough, really well, indestructible. Uh, can't fly, which is a great benefit. Um. But doesn't need to sleep, eat, or breathe, as far as I know. Is he so human? Uh, he almost sounds, in the way he's been described, as being uh, some sort of machine or construct. Um, the Sabers have been doing some research into that, and we kind of think possibly madness was a nascent titan that they found and somehow convinced to sign up is the only one that's not well, i mean titans aren't exactly immortal you can kill them but still um you're looking at you know just just indestructible really so you gotta find if you just be smart about it. You'll find a way, sure, to 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 put it down, or at least get rid of it. 
wondering, will we be able to acquire this research or assist in further research if we are tasked with this? Well, that's kind of the thing. So I say, if you can go, like, get a look in on what it is and find some info, that'd be really helpful. Um, and you, you said you knew of a different, another one of the five? Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard of another, I don't know its name. Um, but, well, uh, everyone knows Sam, uh, who's like their leader, c controls them. Um, somehow, I don't know if it's like has a power over them or if he just is man manipulative, I guess. Um, but, and he's probably the weakest of them all, which is weird. Um, he uses them as shields. But, anyways, I mean, go for the head. I guess, uh, He's just a knife fighter, like a, like a skilled one, but that's, as far as I know, that's it. Is he just a he human? Just carries a couple scalpels. Hmm. So is uh, he the other one you knew about, or? No, there's one that seems to be some sort of construct. Um. That's, uh. He. Last we heard, he showed up in a in a hospital in 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 uh, I believe it was Eudora, and he walked out about a minute later, and nothing was alive, cut to pieces, just just a bloodbath. Uh, uh, One hundred and twenty-five dead. Nova, <laughs> would I know how long? The um, Bastard Five have been active. Uh, you might not. You could always ask. Or it's just mostly asking in reference to like when I would have heard of Madness, like how long ago that. Which I guess is a vague question. You would have heard about. Uh, you would have heard about a decade ago when you like you went back to sort of see some of your old teachers and stuff. To, to learn okay. Things. Okay. Cool. How long? I guess I'll just ask then. <laughs> After thinking about it, how long have the Bastard Five been terrorizing the world? Uh, about two decades. And how many? Uh, if if you know, of the original five. I've heard that they will always maintain that number. Uh, the the original. Well, madness is definitely one of them. That's like and and uh, so is the the construct. Um, I think that's why we got a little information about them. But they're also they're just scary. <laughs> um. And what exactly are they? Don't get me wrong, I see with what they've been doing makes them a menace, but what exactly are they doing that's drawn the ire of the Emperor of Etredale? Well, they're more of a... <sighs> you know if, if like a, a, a rampaging sea monster or a hydra or something like made it to a town, you want to stop it? It's effectively the same thing, but just bigger because... They do more damage and are harder to find. That's the running. That's the theory of why they don't recruit more than five because five can hide. And they all it's, work they, for this we, Sam character who pulls his strings. Yeah, I think he just pulls his own strings. I don't. the The theory is that he just doesn't like the people in charge he seems to go for uh government bodies uh priests and clerics any anyone that's religious at all um anyone that's like loyal to a throne or government he just and we're talking innocent people like you, you know mm. uh, a bunch of priests are, are out healing the sick during a plague and he, he just they, they all die horribly and the knock-on effect to that is 
whole towns are wiped out from from famine and plague. Are the do we know if they're possibly recruiting right now or? And look, I know one of them got caught in Chiron and killed, um, but that was a while ago. Uh, it was as they crossed the Eudora Chiron border, and we haven't. They, Chiron doesn't want to give up any information, so it's it's hard to find out. Um, the Etradalians aren't telling me anything either. So, really, I think yeah, whatever you guys can find is going to help. Mm. Expect. Expect five. And we should also expect that people who have run into them before aren't going to be forthcoming with information. Um, the, the person that we got the information off in... <laughs> from the Adoran hospital. Uh, that was a speak with dead spell. Um, and that was the only body with enough pieces left to have the spell work. When I say they, it was a bloodbath, there was nothing bigger than the size of your fist of anything. They I'm do not fuck around. A minute. Yeah. But you said Chiron is purposely holding back information. You seem to apply Etradale as well, purposely holding back information. Is that uh, just from you, or well, if they send us to kill him, do you think that maybe we'll get more? Well, a large part of the, the Lord's Alliance is currently too busy in a fucking pissing contest to stop whatever the cult is doing. Though, Rianne is taking it seriously, and she, I guess she enjoys her places, place at the top as king, well, queen, queen of the castle. Uh, but, you know, that all falls apart if, if some psychos are running around killing people or a dragon is ruling the roost, depending on which way all this goes. You know, that, or whatever that hell that mad mage was talking about. So. And I suppose I think the nation's uh... holding back information. I suppose the nations are being proprietary yeah, with I their think research. Kyron's holding back. <laughs> It'd be helpful. I think Kyron's holding back information because, honestly, they they trade heavily with dwarves, and, and dwarves are locking down magic. Uh, and most likely, that's how whatever was killed over there was killed. Um, <clears throat> Mitradale is, is doing its best to curry favor with the the dwarves and I know they've been uh, burning large amounts of spell components, except for a small amount in the armories of the Empire. So magic here is going to be real, real expensive to use and hard to find. Perfect. Oh, there is one other piece of information I did hear about, and that's uh, the five apparently can cast without components um i don't know how i, I don't understand it look magic is fairly new you more than anyone probably know this auric about 600 maybe 500 years ago it, it started coming back it had been gone for thousands and thousands of years so yes we know the rules have changed since the original time of the arcane and now but I don't know how they managed to break all the rules. Mm. Mm. That suggests some nefarious hypotheses. Well, well yeah. Interesting. Look, I, I've got a couple of days where I can liaise with you. Um, I just want to check up and make sure you're okay. Uh, if you want, I can make sure that there's, there's connected rooms at the back. First of all, you each got like a, a bed as a communal sleeping area. And, and you're safe. I can make sure the guards come in except into this room here to drop food off. And you'll be, you'll be safe. It's fine. But uh, if you don't want to be bothered while you get a few days to talk and plan, 
that's good. Uh, two three days from now, they're gonna want to hold the the meeting to to kind of get you assigned to a house to help out. And I really recommend you do whatever you can to earn favor here. Oh, hopefully, you can get some modicum of power here through wealth or, or good deed, and maybe you can turn the the lords to really looking at the right threats. And how are we, uh, how are we to get in contact with you? Well, um, <sighs> pretty much just a knock at the door should be enough. Um, you know, there's the guard out there. Just say you're looking for me. Um, I, I go by the name Harkin here, by the way. Harkin. There is a very, very small sect of the Black Sabres here. And we have some resources, but it's going to be a little difficult. If anything you need, you can ask, just it might take a bit of time. Understood. Well, we'll need Yako to need bring to our equipment back. Few of us uh, are a little short-handed. Yeah, Yako should be here in... I don't know, I'd imagine a couple of days. Last I heard, he's still at port. We we have a... Yes, there's a carrier pigeon system here which gets information well enough. Since, apparently, uh, spellcasting is more or less off-limits. They might make some exceptions outside the city walls to those of you that can cast, but I'd be very careful inside them. Hmm. Nowhere near as har harsh as, as Duskfall, so, you know, but just, uh, they don't want to ruin their trade agreements. Can I run a quick idea by you? Go for it. And this, this goes for all of the minds that are quite a bit sharper than me, but do you find it strange that these five, really difficult to take down, one of them gets taken down with magic, and yet are so scared to admit that they used magic because of laws that have been put out there to limit the use of magic? even against such a threat from a group who can cast without components and meanwhile mass burnings of magical components is happening at the same time there's something about that that rubs me wrong it it uh, it annoys a lot of us to be to be honest uh i'm not talking annoyance though oh <laughs> I'm talking about some suspicion. That you think the dwarves are maybe using magic? No, no. I, I think maybe someone is also upset with the way that things are being run. And maybe this Sam is a smoother talker than we're even giving him credit for. A good, you know, a, a, a sharp tongue around the right ears is better than any other kind of weapon you wield their weapons against others it seems like someone is stripping away the best defenses that this world has against these five I mean it makes sense to a point I think uh, not sure my my personal theory on the way that the, the magic the dwarven god doesn't like magic. Magic comes from a whole bunch of other planes and gods. It comes from I, one god. Goddess. I, yeah, I, like I know Ophelia is head of the council, okay, but still, that's not the, the point. The point is that anytime someone casts a spell of a certain school, they in somewhat tiny amount empower other gods. 
so I think the dwarves are looking for supremacy, and on top of that, they have some real crazy tech nowadays. Mm. Epicium more or less uh, endlessly stores uh, magical energy. But... I have a question. Yeah? It's about the five. Go you mentioned it. that they target holy individuals, yes? Yeah. Why would they use magic if pulling from any school, as you said, empowers a god? Why would they be using magic? Don't know. You, <laughs> go, you if you find Sam, ask him. It's a question a lot of people want to know about. It and could be was, related to their lack of need for supplies and reagents for magic components. I don't pretend to know that much about arcane forms of magic. I really do stay in nature, try not to tr tread too far from it. <clears throat> so, I, I don't know if this might just be an arcane caster thing, or... Not a caster, really. Not really. But, look, I'm, I'm gonna leave you guys to rest. I'll get some food sent in to you about half an hour. Take the rest of the day, relax. Tomorrow, we can get to work on figuring things out, okay? I suppose Thanks, there isn't Art. really much of a choice, is there? Not really. It'll be nice to sleep I'm sorry in bed. for the current predicament, but... <clears throat> yeah, I've heard you guys have been slumming it a bit. This is as safe as you're gonna get for a while. Enjoy it. There's a thousand men guarding this area. And not just the Sanguinar, but the other 20 houses are he's sending their servants here to guard. So, take some time, relax. I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, at 9 o'clock. All right. We'll see you then. Okay. He uh, gets up, moves the door, knocks twice, door opens. And he, uh, he leaves. It's about five o'clock in the evening. The food will come in between 5.30 and 6. You do whatever you want until you go to bed. I just want to spend some time petting my invisible pupper. Okay. He is a surprising sight for sore eyes. Yeah. It's uh, good to have someone in our corner. I don't suppose we should mention his wife. Well, he probably knows one way or another mm. he's here. So you told me allegedly what you had done. What did you actually do? Most of it. <sighs> People died in the process of us saving other individuals and also in us attempting escapes we were not always as careful as we probably should have been a few jobs got a bit sloppy but is that how that your friend lost an arm which one well our crimes were not did not contribute to her loss of limb but that was more of a happening because of the good things we were doing, actually. We were trying, trying to, to make save things right. We attracted a whole lot of wrong, I think. Again, we have that uh, gravity, as Auric put it. Yes. Is she still alive, or did she make it? She's being she well taken alive. care of. Oh, yeah. Strange profession. Uh, there were some unforeseen circumstances, needless to say, uh, uh, gruesome events that one could not have expected. Even for a divination wizard. 
such as she. The, the enemies we made were not as nice as these knights. <laughs> and they had captured her. The enemies, you mean the ones who were had some had to do with that beast. Yes. Cultists. Zealots. As much as I uh, lament the justice system of this city, uh, it certainly beats having one's limbs chopped off and bones etched upon. As you guys are talking, uh, the lanterns in the hallway are blown out, and you hear this cranking noise coming from the bedroom area. Are you guys still sitting at the table? Right yeah. now, I think we are, yeah. Okay. There's this, like, loud grinding noise and, like, a... Like a yeah, like a like, cranking noise uh, coming from the bedroom area. Does anyone go look or are you just going to, like, leave it be? Yeah, no, I'll... I'll go look. Can I send my wolf to look with Sloan? I know she can't see him, but I'd like sure. to send him anyway. Um, Sloan was, like, only half paying attention to their conversation because she's, you know, kind of like... Or are we just we're gonna go fight these things like this does this is not fun so she's just kind of <laughs> like trying to she's scared but so she's gonna distract herself and get up and go check out what that sound is sure uh there is a very thick large metal plate lowering over your window as night is as is falling and they're making sure you can't escape at night okay I come um back. Yeah, it's it's a good like, you know, four or five inch thick uh steel. Lovely. Yeah. It, it is now to worry about more or less worry. just pitch black in this room. Uh Do you think even dark vision is like gonna help you out. Wrong character. Uh I believe I should have unless they took my shit, I should have some candles. I'll release dancing uh, lights since I killed. Cool. You you release dancing lights? Well, um, maybe not. Yes, uh, no, he said it. He said it. <laughs> he said it. <laughs> <laughs> like this for sure got magic tricks oh, no. all over it. Oh, yeah, no. that's just for, I was thinking. I was thinking you about release, the, uh... You release dancing lights, and the door opens, and three guards come in with clubs and shields. Oh no! 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 One of them holds up a hand, uh, and just goes. Three, two, they're gone. Yeah, they're gone. They back out the room. One looks at all of you as two, two are like sort of like at the doorway, and starts collecting pouches, spell books, anything you had with you because you cast a spell. They're making sure you've got no components, no spell focuses, nothing. Oh, they're taking uh -oh. my stuff. Uh -oh. Did they take Everything. my rock? Uh. Hold on, let me read something. Saros his pet rock. Not my pet rock. <laughs> I feel like, I feel would you, like would you part rock. an old man from his pet rock? <laughs> I feel, like, I feel, like, a, I feel like a rock is really hard to it's be like, yeah, like a staff is an obvious thing. They won't take your rock. Okay, they're not going to just like lop off my whole arm with Oryx spell book on it. No, no. they don't. They I mean, it's like tattoos. They're not going to scoop my eye out. But everything else, staff, component pouches, anything else is is taken away and is now outside the door in a pile. Um, no, but is there any way that I can... Too late. Is there any way that I could tell if this was just because they saw the magic happen through the bar or the window of the bars, or is there, did this seem to be like the chamber itself uh, alerted them? Uh, make an intelligence check. I tell what okay. the result is. Um, uh, that is a, ugh, it's almost a, uh, third, uh, what did it go? Ten. Ten. Hmm. You are not entirely sure. The most obvious answer is that they saw some light and okay. it's lights out and you tried to get around that rule. So they were like, no, no, don't do that. So they're trying to like 
they're all they they kind of sitting there waiting for you to they're outside the door but you can see like someone's like peering in a little bit like just sort of at the vague shadows that you are waiting for you to you know get your asses to bed sort of thing can i just like hide behind the door and just spookily put my creepy withered face in front of the bars <laughs> and just go like <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a just a, a club just bang on the balls. <laughs> uh, another question, Nova. Um, mm -hmm. With since I have my orb in my eye, can I still cast cantrips or or not? You, uh, I would say that you can. You only need an arcane yeah. focus to replace the material spell. Yeah, that's why I was asking. Yeah, because some of them do have material components, and they can't take your spell book from me. <laughs> Terrible. So, what do you guys want to do? It is night. It is dark. You have guards like watching you and listening in. But I do. I think I'd get in trouble to light a candle to help. The uh, you had your bag taken see. away, so you don't have anything. Yeah, to we light don't a have candle. anything. Oh my god! Really? <sighs> also, I'm ninety nine percent sure the same thing would happen if a candle was lit. Yeah. I'm gonna go sit in a corner. Okay, so yes. you go. Yes, I'm going to bed. You, so everyone's going. You going to bed? I'm going to bed. Yep. I don't know about anybody else, but Sloane, I'm going are you to going to bed or just going to sit in a corner? I'm going to sit in a corner for a little bit. Okay. I, I am going to. Um. I'm just gonna. No, I'm not going to do anything. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. Just don't do anything. No, it's unnecessary. I won't do it. Okay. So we've got, I just need, raise, raise your hand if going to bed. Yeah, Please. yeah, I'll go to bed. Okay, uh, who's actually staying up the night and doing stuff? I mean, no, I'm because go, I'm, I'm an elf, do I still have the trance? Yeah, but you can go to do bed if you wish. Thing? It's the same It's the same effective thing. Um, Orc's going to go to bed. It's, yep, it's yeah, it's Yeah, most, it's mostly like she can't sleep, but um, she'll probably fall asleep eventually. I'll okay. do my four-hour trance, but I'm not going to sleep. Okay. So. Seros. In your sleep, you feel something scratch your face sharply, waking you up. That's... While you're still in your half-asleep stupor, you feel an intense pain in your hand as something is driven through it and then you feel your bed sort of vibrate under you from an impact but you hear no sound i i wake up yes I, <laughs> my, open my, open my eyes. I guess it's pitch black so i'm not really going to see much anyway but there is a very small amount of light peeking in from the now open Metal gate, or metal bar, which is, uh, sorry, sheet, guard, Shutter, yeah. shell, help. Um, window. And you can see <laughs> that, yeah, the, the window covering. You can see that part of it has been bent aside. There's a metallic being hanging upside down from the roof. This featureless, smooth face. He sort of like peers down at you. His head rotates the entire way around at 270 degrees. So he's looking down at you. The joints all seem to be able to rotate independently well past what a human range of motion is meant to be. One of his legs from his on the roof position flips all the way around and like, like a hydraulic piston extends out and clamps from one hand that's pinned the opposite hip. And you can feel like crunch in a bit into oh, your yeah. body. That's something new. As you say that, you hear no sound. You know your mouth is moving. You're like, you're thinking the words, but nothing comes out. Can I blade pinch myself? With your other hand that's free? Yeah, I guess like just down on my leg or something. I mean, the pain in your hand probably tells you you're pretty awake, but you can pinch yourself. There's, you know, you can feel the blood welling out of your hand. It's been impaled. Another blade extends from his arm and is right above your face with a drop of blood suspended from the tip. 
I'm just racing through my spells here. I don't really have things that do things. I'm just good at finding people and smashing their faces in. As this head rotates, look at you. You feel the blades above your face move to your chest and sink in just a little bit. Uh, I would like to cast Divine Intervention. Read out Divine Intervention for us all, please. Uh, um, so I get this at being a level 10 cleric. As an action, request your deity's aid and roll percentile dice. If the number rolled is equal to or less than your cleric level, i.e. 10, uh, your deity intervenes. If successful, you can't use this feature again for seven days. Otherwise, you can use it again after a long rest. At 20th level, your request okay. succeeds automatically. Roll an initiative check because you... This will be a combat since he would have had the advantage. And I'll say that you've got 10 points of bludgeoning to your hip and 20 points of piercing to your hand currently. Uh, uh, so 30, 30 hit points is gone already. Okay, let me just roll. And then roll D20. me some initiative. I'm gonna... 15. I'm going to have to do it manually. My dice roll is not showing up. Neither is mine. I don't know what that... Oof. Okay. Plus 15 to initiative. Oh, God. <laughs> so... Uh, as I didn't you, need to see that. <laughs> as, I know. Well, unfortunately, we don't have the GM rolls on right now. As you sit there and go to open your mouth, there's really rapid, quick cuts. Uh, I apologize for this. He's not sorry. Oh, it comes to sorry, damage. Not sorry. <laughs> All right. These these are the attacks. <laughs> Ready? One. Uh oh. Two. Now are these damage or to hit? I'm just I'm rolling to attack right now. Oh, he can't miss me. Oh, these are okay. Yeah. So, it's plus with with a plus so just so everyone everyone that's uh playing at home, uh, Auric rolled a a sorry Sarah rolled a fifteen initiative. This creature on the roof, twenty one. Uh, he then rolled four attacks, 31, point, 31 to hit, 32 to hit, 27 to hit, 25 to hit. Technically, I'm you prone are, as well, so it, it, it I mean, get I, I could do advantage, but those. it's fine. So what I'm going to do is crits, just... Uh, <laughs> yeah, right? You just want to Though I also think I have sleep paralysis, so they might just be automatic, Chris, at this point. I'm not really <laughs> sure. I'm not sure if this is... Mm. So you take, Ooh. I'm just rolling them out, and I'll tell everyone what we got. Uh, 18 points of slashing damage across your chest. Yeah. 19 points of slashing damage across your chest. Yep. Yeah. 16 across your stomach. Cool. Yep. And then 18 across your stomach. Sure, I'm fine. Are you still awake? Are you unconscious? Oh yeah, I still got 48 health. How much health have you got? 119. Okay. Jesus, okay. <laughs> yeah, it turns out we're level so, 14 characters. <laughs> um, what? Don't even bring that up. <laughs> I'm still under 100. You are sitting there, and now you can, you've just been slashed like repeatedly across the chest. You can feel the blood running in rivers across your torso. No sound through this entire thing. You, as you're calling out to your deity, you look to the side, and your friends are sitting there peacefully sleeping. Nia might be sitting up, sorry, really might be sitting up in a trance, but she's not facing you. Right. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. I mean, everything about this Roll screams me. dream, except for the screaming pain in my hand and the multiple stab wounds. Roll yourself your D100 for your divine intervention. Two. Two. 
That's pretty good. No way. No way. Now, once again, read me exactly what it says. Oh my god. Just so it I've got it. I mean, I've got my worked. book here. I could... Yes! This, is, it this never is not even... This isn't a Dungeons and Dragons spell. Like, this is literally a god being like, I got you, man. Like, yeah. this is not... As an action, request your deity's aid and roll percentile dice. If the number rolled is equal to or less than your cleric level, your deity intervenes. If successful, you can't use this feature again for seven days. Intervene. Okay. I want you to tell me the <laughs> sentence you would ask of your, your deity, and it should be thought in your head right now. And, it, you know, I actually have to hear the words, though. One sentence. Yeah, I'm just... Yeah. He's... <laughs> it looks like he's actually praying, like... Right? I think oh, really Someone get like, me out of this campaign. I put my fingers on my nose. He's so in character right now. <laughs> <laughs> if he doesn't plug his own nose, then all of his thoughts come out his nose. It's, like, a really embarrassing... <laughs> <laughs> you really are. <laughs> I, I would say, I would think, uh, devour the essence of this assassin who has come to end me. Okay. Take my lunch money too, damn. You... From your other hand, you feel the black chain coil, that inky sort of shadow around it. And you can feel the weight of that stone now in it. Uh, you can make an attack. And I'm going to give you uh, effectively uh, your, your god is striking through you right now. Uh, how, so, how do you want me to roll this? Roll a D twenty plus twenty. Thirty eight. Just hits. All right. I was gonna say if that, um, if that doesn't hit, I have a D six that I got given last session. I'll add to it. <laughs> okay. Now you can roll your meteor hammer's damage, and he's going to make a save against the the eating essence thing but also uh you can make a a a check to see if you can just like launch him off you with this hit uh yeah i mean i think that's... effectively effectively your your rock has just become the fist of god slapping this thing aside right right that's that's fair that's fair um so i'll just roll it's it's straight normal damage I mean, because normally yeah. I would I would cast Booming Blade and I would use a bonus action to do the stupid planar yeah, thing, but the, it seems like I'm going to skip Stop, don't worry. <laughs> um, so let's just roll that damage then. Yep, tell me what the damage be. <laughs> Low ball! <laughs> okay. Okay. He's going to... Roll the, I rolled uh, a one on my damage dice, so six is the base damage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No worries. I mean, I'm adding uh, 20 to it for the, the, the god smack. So, just he's just going to roll his opposed uh, athletics and acrobatics to, to stop. So you've got 26. Oh, he natural 20. Oh. Ouch. Uh, okay. Can I use my hero point to make him re-roll that at 20? Sure. That is the use of the hero point. Do oh, we still uh, have hero points? Is that... Yes. You do, yeah. Okay, he'll reroll. Eh, it's still, it's still maybe with that twenty-eight still beats still twenty-six plus eighteen. But <laughs> what's I gonna happen is <laughs> go for it. Add your d six. God's like, why are Come you doing this? At least a two. Come on, yeah. Okay. Imagine if it was a one. So, <laughs> I thought it was for sure gonna right? be a one. I thought it was gonna be a one. Like, the god was gonna be like, oh, so, no, don't push it, buddy. <laughs> so pretty much, you swing your arm up, and the orb hits it, and you see it like driving into the creatures like trying not to move 
And then there's this like flare of energy and he just gets launched across the room. His back hits the wall, still no sound. The wall just dents in was like uh Mason is falling down and he sort of sits there and just on one leg pivots around. His arms will rotate around because he's like being launched and he's hit uh face first against the wall. His whole body sort of like pivots and changes direction at its joints to look back at you. And he comes forward again. Uh roll me a hmm. You know, what's your spell save, DC? Ooh. It is... Uh, 18. His save is... Nat 20. 20. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. So, as as you see, your that flare of energy is sitting there, and it's, like, trying to absorb his magic. Uh, his, his essence, I should say. He sort of just, like, walks towards it, and the extendo blade that he had in his arm sort of just like thrusts out with it you see the joints at the elbow shoulder and wrist all piston out and he just stabs into your chest oh. as you're trying to sit up and it sort of like cracks the sternum misses your spine and lungs and just smashes you into the wall behind uh if if i'm gonna roll his attack again but you've already told me that kind of uh, auto hits you yeah. when this thing got thrown back by Saros, is it still dead silent? Yeah, 21 yeah. to hit, cool. hits, yes? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't even have um, armor on right now. <laughs> and... Where was it? And he's going to do this. And then I'm going to roll his... My ghost is going to be so mad at these guards. <laughs> Arthur's didn't protect us for shit. Uh, one second... That work? Oh, they're just smoking a cigarette outside. All right, so you take a total of thirty-nine points of damage 39. as you just like smashed into the wall. I'm still with up. A piercing attack. Okay. If single, he has more attacks, points. but he's going to sit there and rip it out of you. Move to the window and rip it more open. Step out and then just like twist the metal so it like all like rips out of its foundations a bit but stays blocking the window oh cool and you and after about 10 seconds all the sound returns and you can hear your breath in your lungs gurgling all the fluid inside you and you can like hear the dripping onto the floor the pattering of blood just just pulling out of you onto the bed is this enough to bring me out of my trance? Probably not, unless he's going to be like, "Oh God, please oh, help this, me!" I would just be screaming. Yeah, like the moment that yeah. sound kicked in, it would you would all just hear Sarah screaming. Imagine it would be like a like a like a me wouldn't be able to get like a full yeah. scream out. Yeah. Make make a con save to stay conscious. Just like you've had pain, but this is also I don't think you've had like just been ripped apart. You've been burnt, which is very painful. Been, but oh God. A lot of surface oh, damage in your past, not a lot of internal damage. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, buddy. Uh saving throw. Here we go. That's a roll of the two for a four. As he screams, the breath catches in his lungs a bit, and he passes out as you all turn and gather around his bed in horror and carve into his chest just on top of the tiny, like just lots and lots of cuts, the words pain across his chest. And across his abdomen, chosen. And we'll end the session right there. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I think we met the construct. <laughs> I think we met the construct. Yeah. <laughs> what is wrong with you? What is actually wrong with you? Oh my He's god. He's just making sure we know what we're up against. <laughs> Add this to the list of body wounds on this poor poor cleric let it be known that really i will be trying to attend to those wounds as soon as she sees this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. appreciate, Pain appreciate. Chosen. so healer to healer uh, i apologize to everyone for the session starting so slowly having a few tech issues taking a bit of time to actually get you know into the session proper and then the session being a bit uh interesting with the tech stuff we will try to get the dice roll working for next session there's a few things we've got to do 
Um, hopefully I'll go over that with you in a minute, uh, Agent. But I hope you enjoyed the session, despite the fact it was more or less the imprisonment session and the torture <laughs> session. Uh, sorry about that. So I didn't do anything. You deserved it. I got it. taken prison. Um, <laughs> so I would like to thank Hero Forge once again for sponsoring us. Um, uh, they have an amazing tool that you can find online that lets you custom create minis for your campaigns which is which is awesome and then uh once we have the rest of our tech stuff set up we will also be using the tokens that you can get uh when you subscribe to them which allows you to import your your character into any virtual tabletop uh we we use foundry we've also used roll 20 on the channel before and they look great they're really really cool um so highly highly recommend them i have a bunch of minis from them myself sitting in my cupboard uh and i will be using them hopefully on screen at some point towards the end of this session, not session, season, or campaign. So that'd be cool. Uh, but before we continue with the goodbyes and the signing off, we'll just do a quick round of the cast. So starting with, at the bottom, Relia. Hi, my name is Shelby, or Whistle, and I'm from the channel Whistle While I Work. It's a channel where I tell stories from my D&D experience, draw whatever fun fantasy stuff comes to mind. And I have been playing Miss Relia Silverfond, a uh, uh, wood elven shaman. She's she's innocent, totally innocent. She, she didn't do anything, and now she's here. All right, next up, above, above her, we have uh, Saros. Hello, uh, my name is Agent Number One. I am a Twitch streamer who streams on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays over on my own channel. Uh, I'm also part of the Wonders and Blunders crew, which is a D&D 5th edition podcast that Mike is going to tell you all about uh, when we introduce him. And uh, yeah, I've been playing Saros, your, your, your mage slaying body horror... I, I don't know why. Did... Shish kebab. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. All right, uh, across from me then, we have Oric. Hey everybody, my name is Sean. Uh, you can find me on all social medias at Odo underscore Sean. I am the uh, DM of the flagship show over at Paradise RPG every Monday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we play uh, some super fun D&D that's uh, maybe not as deadly as this one, but just as traumatic. Um, and it's getting deadlier uh, the more I play in these games. <laughs> <laughs> and then on Thursday nights, I stream on Paradise, uh, my Relaxing in Paradise show, where I uh, draw maps, paint minis, play Valheim, uh, do some campaign prep, and just hang out with folks. It's a lot of fun, and Shannon will tell you about some of our other programming. Just want to want to throw in there for sure on hashtags kill Scarlet, please. Um, <laughs> no, but you are a terrible influence everywhere uh, you go. I swear to God, a terrible influence. Uh, uh, don't worry, don't worry. Next I'm on along, it. I'm on it. We have Leaf. <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Mike Fardy. I am the DM for Wonders and Blunders, which is kind of a uh, not deadly, not traumatic, cutesy, <laughs> uh, 5e horror comedy D&D podcast. Uh, so I'm I'm in over my head, as I have been for the entire uh, season and a bit that we've been doing this. Uh, but you can find us anywhere at Wonder and Blunder. Um, and I, I, you can also find me on the new podcast that I just joined called That's Lunacy, where we watch every werewolf movie uh and talk about them and just get horny like the wolf uh which is our unofficial <laughs> slogan hmm. uh next along we have sloan who also plays the soon to be dead scarlet no not soon to be dead scarlet she lives forever okay hi everybody my name is shannon i am also from paradise rpg and i play our party rogue who will live forever right and her name is scarlet um, but here I play Sloane, our party, um, our party barbarian slash fighter. I am also one half of the Tim and Shannon Power Hour on Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern. I hang out in chat for Sean's uh, Relaxing in Paradise um, stream. I also hang out for our One Shots in Paradise on Saturdays once a month. Our next one is on April 17th. We're putting the cats together now. Very excited. Um, you can find me on socials at srobi25 as I am our Paradise Community Manager as well. Okay, uh, I'll get one of you guys to throw in your, your link to stuff as opposed uh, to I'll commands, just not working. I'll do it. But, Hi. yes. Yeah. Hi, I'm Nova, or Nova1. Uh, I am your... Uh, tra traumatizer, I guess? I don't know. Um, <laughs> That's accurate. I like how everyone's just like, yes, this is what yeah. you are. <laughs> um, 
I got intro like someone that I got introduced to yesterday by uh, our, our lovely Shelby here was like, "Hi, I hear you are the Weaver of Nightmares." I was like, "Oh, I like this." <laughs> uh, <laughs> I made a grave a mistake. Title. That's a great title. Uh, so, anyways, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm no no one. I, I uh, run off damage with uh, two friends, AJ uh, or, or, or AJ Winters, and uh, our good friend Bree, who is the artist. And we get help from all these lovely people to have our shows run. So uh, thank you all for coming along, sticking around. Once again, I really do apologize for tech issues. But um, we hope to see you next time. We hope it's a bit smoother next time. And we'll see uh, what's in store for young Saros the Impaled. Uh, okay, let's find someone to rate. Who, who are we rating, tech man? Well, you know, uh, as every time happens when I am surprisingly doing tech, I forget uh, who who we want to find. Um, We have a de Descent into Avernus, episode three. This seems like it could that be fun. Good. Let's let's do that. Miss Magitech. Ooh, I meant to be uh, the one sending the raid across. So I'm going to go find that. I'm going to post the send name me the right name there. And there we go. Uh, do that, that. Do done. this. Do that. Yeah. We are uh, they six. look they look pretty fun. They've got some good hero forges on there, some good costumes. This DM looks All like right. he is Avernus himself. <laughs> which I can appreciate. Okay, one second. Because all of a sudden my computer started screaming at me. Now I can hear things again. Alright guys, uh we're gonna send you off. We're gonna send you off with an ad break because it supports us and really helps us and lets us continue doing this sort of stuff. So please stick around, really appreciate it. it runs about 30 seconds to a minute, and then the rate will go through. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bad button. <laughs>